Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to cover the reason why Black Chrysanthemum was banned from his home world, Kashyyyk. And if you didn't know this, he was. Let's find out why. So the Wookiees were a very honor-bound race. When Obi-Wan taunted Black Chrysanthemum while the pair dueled high upon a sand-swept plateau, the Jedi struck a chord. Your Black Chrysanthemum, the infamous bounty hunter, Kenobi said coolly, with arms folded neatly behind his back. Staring up at the hulking Wookiee, it was hard to know whether Obi-Wan truly felt confident or he was just faking bravado, hoping that it would intimidate his opponent. I know why you were forced to leave Kashyyyk and how you've disgraced your people ever since. By the time Obi-Wan finished his statement, the Wookiee had heard about as much as he could handle. Immediately after this exchange, the two would duel and Obi-Wan would be forced to ignite his blue lightsaber one last time. But Kenobi brought up an interesting topic. Why exactly was Black Chrysanthemum forced to leave Kashyyyk? I mean, you have to do something pretty serious to be outcast from your own home planet. So that's what we're going to try and answer today. Before we begin, hit that like button, sit back, relax, and here we go. Black Chrysanthemum's history is one of the murkiest stories in the galaxy. Before his private interview with a pair of investigative journalists, we only knew that the murderous Wookiee was one of Jabba the Hutt's favorite bounty hunters, and that he often worked alongside the rogue archaeologist Dr. Afra. Even after he gave a tell-all about his life, Black Chrysanthemum managed to omit key parts of his story. From his birth until his ultimate departure from the Warshire Tree carpeted planet, we only know one tale, and that's the day he left. Years ago, on the Wookiee homeworld of Kashyyyk, Long before Black Chrysanthemum ever joined Boba Fett or worked for Darth Vader, the dark furred Wookiee waited in hiding, in the cover of night. Above a massive Trandoshan freighter descended through the atmosphere, aiming for a small clearing between nests of trees. As the moons of Kashyyyk orbited above, Black Chrysanthemum bided his time until the mob of reptilian slave hunters clambered down the ship's ramp. Okay, boys, a brackish hued Trandoshan said, clutching the barrel of his marksman's carbine. Let's go get ourselves a rug. This was a tale as old as time. Trandoshans hunted Wookiees, sold them to Imperial slave camps, traded them in gladiatorial arenas, or simply killed them for sport. And the Wookiees, for their part, tried to defend themselves, but there was something different about this night. Crouching patiently in the shadows, watching the throng of slavers march, single file through the small gaps in the trees, was Black Chrysanthemum. As the reptilian hunters followed their bio-tracers, they pushed further and further into the jungle. When they approached a grove of giant ferns, their biomarkers pinged louder and louder. One of the Trandoshans set his blaster to stun, leapt in front, and fired at the target. But he was shocked by what he found. They had tracked down a Wookiee, sure. But the massive, brown-furred beast was already unconscious by the time the Trandoshans had arrived. It had been beaten into a coma and was strapped to the trees. This was a trap. No good. Let's get... A green-scaled slaver said, but his words were cut short. Suddenly, from the dark tree line, a volley of bowcaster fire filled the night. It was Chrysanthemum. The Trandoshans tried to return fire. The surviving three lined up, firmly setting the butt of their carbines against their shoulders and unleashed a river of blue bolts. It was bait, a slaver said, giving life to the thought that was on everybody's mind. A Wookiee left another furball to bleed to death as bait? His partner replied, shocked. The Trandoshans were known as a cunning, backstabbing species, but they never could have imagined a Wookiee could match their depravity. As a red blast of that same bowcaster struck the trunk of a tree right next to the Trandoshans, they decided to change plans. Yeah, enough of this capture alive business. He fries. Boldly, they jumped up and squeezed their blaster triggers as tightly as they could. They hoped that their last minute bravery, combined with their superior technology, would be enough to win the fight. They were wrong. Aided by the Black Knight, Chrysanthemum punched one of the Trandoshans, then threw him into a nearby tree, killing him on impact. Only one of the reptilian scum remained, and Chrysanthemum knew what he was going to do with him. After all, the Wookiee had designed this trap with only one goal in mind, to get off of Kashyyyk and join the gladiatorial training gowns that the Zanti brothers ran. But this night, the last one that Black Chrysanthemum would spend on Kashyyyk couldn't possibly be the reason the Wookiee was forced to leave. He must have done something far earlier, but the records are lost. Only Black Chrysanthemum knows the true reasons for his exile, and he isn't likely to share it. Although, if we look closely at Wookiee culture and the unique society that has developed on the world of Kashyyyk, we can make a few guesses as to the cause of Chrysanthemum's departure from his home world. As we mentioned earlier, Wookiee culture was extremely ritualized and honor-bound. And like any ancient tribe, roles within a village were very strict. 
and causing a fellow Wookiee to lose face or to damage their reputation was grounds for punishment. Even when it came to contests of combat, the Wookiees didn't simply stab each other to death. Every member of the species had razor-sharp retractable claws that they used to nimbly ascend the mighty warsher trees that lined the planet. But if any member of their village used those claws in a fight, they would bring shame upon themselves. And if they didn't repent, they would be outcast. So with rules like these, it's easy to see how a violent Wookiee like Black or Santin could become exiled. In his scheme to hitch a ride with Trandoshan traitors, the monstrous warrior was willing to kidnap, brutally beat, and leave a fellow Wookiee for dead. If he was capable of such a heinous act, then something as simple as unleashing his claws in ritual combat or nearly killing a male rival in his village isn't far-fetched, and any of those acts would be disgraceful enough to cast him out of society. Perhaps we will find out the true answer to his exile in the Book of Boba Fett. Or maybe we'll see him in the Kenobi show as well. I definitely hope to see him fight Obi-Wan Kenobi in the Kenobi show. I think a battle like that would be something that we've never seen on screen before. And not to mention, I really can't wait to see Black Chrysanthemum throw down. Hopefully he will, and he's not just there as, you know, a cool looking Wookiee. Anyways, thanks for watching this video. Let me know what you think about Black Chrysanthemum and why you think he might have been exiled for real. I'll see you all in the watch party. Catch you in the next video. Until then, remember, the Force will be with you. Always. Was Vader. His bounty hunters had failed, so he had descended to the surface of the lava planet Merrick's Minor to finish the job. The Dark Lord of the Sith approached the Black Stone Tower, where Boba Fett waited with the remains of Silistrine. You have something that is mine. Bring it and receive your reward, Vader demanded, hoping perhaps that Fett didn't know about the second group of bounties that Vader had hired to kill him. But Fett knew better. If he jumped out of the tower to meet Vader and handed over the casket with the Ikari's severed head, what would have happened? Would Vader simply hand over 12,000 credits and send Fett on his way? Eh, it's unlikely. Vader would ignite his red lightsaber and drag it in the gap between Fett's helmet and shoulder blades, or perhaps just slice Fett's head off. Vader's only plan was to kill the Mandalorian and steal the casket. So. Fett did what any wise bounty hunter would do in that situation. He jumped onto the ledge of one of the tower's windows, extended his EE-3 carbine rifle, and fired a volley of shots at Vader. But with a single outstretched hand, Vader deflected the rounds, bending them away from his face with only inches to spare. As Fett emptied his magazine, Celestrine's severed head started to hint at Boba's dark future. She even offered to tell the hunter whether he would live or die, but Fett just ignored her. I'll make my own future. So